the Lord. Reach out to three people wherever you are, whether in the church in Munich or in Eden. Tell them this is your year of great grace. Three people prophesy to them. This is your year of great grace. This is your year of great grace. Praise the Lord. Grace we do graciously for you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please take your seat wherever you are. I want to welcome you this morning to this service in Eden, Lagos, Nigeria. This is a service we call Gospelogy, being transmitted from Eden all the way to Munich. And those of you watching online, I want to say a big welcome to you this morning. I'm being ready to be Gospelogized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you ready to be Gospelogized? Then you are ready for a transformation. Yes, sir. You are ready for a transformation. Yes, Tell your neighbor, be ready for the transformation. Yes, Praise the Lord. Gospelogy never leaves you the same. Just as technology never leaves you the same. Amen? There is no way you will apply technology and it will not make things easier around you. In the same way, there is no way you will apply gospology and not see a difference in your life. Praise the Lord. Technology is not theory. May I remind you, technology is not theory. Amen? So gospology is not theory. Technology is the application of science for industrial purposes or to make things better. And gospelogy is the application of the word of God to make any life better. Any life. Any life better. Praise the Lord. And this morning, I want to talk to us about Jesus, the change maker. Amen? I want to talk to us about Jesus, the change maker. You can also say, I want to talk to you about the word, the agent of change. It's the same because Jesus is the word, isn't it? So, when I say to you, I want to talk to us about Jesus, the change maker, I am saying, let's talk about the word, the agent of change. Amen? Everybody talks about change. In 2019, many have decreed many changes they want to have in their lives. Nigeria needs change. We are back at it again. Four years ago, the nation needed change. We were looking for a Messiah. We were looking for a deliverer. Amen? Amen. And now four years later again, what do we want? Change. <laughs> change again. We are looking for another deliverer. We are looking for another Messiah. The, the, the question is that why? Why do we go this vicious circle of four years looking for change? Why do we look for change every four years? Praise the Lord. Why do we look for change? What kind of change are you after in your life? Even if you are not, listen now, even if you are not, by virtue of where you are watching, a Nigerian or an African, but most society looks for a change from time to time. Who is responsible for a change? Who is responsible for a change in your life? Praise the Lord. Who is responsible for change in your life? Are you sure? How? Because I said Jesus, the change maker. No, 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 not Jesus. Not Jesus. Praise the Lord. You are responsible for change in your life. 
you are responsible. It is for the same reason we are looking for messiahs that don't exist. We are looking for deliverers that don't exist. Let me ask you, for example, in Nigeria, schools are very expensive, isn't it? Let's think about private schools. They are very expensive, very expensive, isn't it? And then we wish they would change. We wish that schools would become cheaper, right? Who is responsible for cheaper schools? Jesus? Who is responsible for cheaper school? Who is responsible? Do you see how it gets complicated? Who is responsible for a cheaper school? Hallelujah. See, we need to understand what we are asking for. The disciples of Jesus, their mother came and asked Jesus, please, permit that my two children, one of them will sit on your right hand, one will sit on the left hand. Jesus looked and said, you know not what you are asking for. When we talk about change, I just said, let's take, for instance, schools. How is it possible that Christian schools in Nigeria, Christian schools in Nigeria are more expensive than government schools? Who is responsible for it? Who is responsible? How can you justify, listen, we are talking about change, praise the Lord. If you know what steps that is necessary for your change, then you can take it, isn't it? How can you explain that Christian schools are more expensive than government schools? How do you explain that Christians cannot afford their own schools but go to government? And yet, the church will have the audacity to criticize the government. No, think about it. Think about it. Churches have banks in Nigeria today. Amen? But it is more difficult for a Christian to get a loan from church banks than from Nigerian banks. Who is responsible? No, who is responsible? And yet, we have the audacity to blame government for everything. Just like we blame others for our situations in our lives. We, the thing now is Buhari. Buhari is everybody's problem. Buhari is the cause of every problem. Praise the Lord. If you don't have transportation, Buhari. If you don't have garden in your house, Buhari. Praise the Lord. Everything that happens is what? Buhari. And Christians have joined it. We are walking like fools without understanding. Since when did Buhari become responsible for garden in your kitchen? Or in your, since when? Think about it. No, think about it. Before Buhari came, who was there? Before Buhari, who was there? Before Jonathan, who was there? Listen, listen, listen. Buhari is only here for four years. Before Buhari, we had Obasanjo, a Christian. We had good luck Jonathan, a Christian, and a professor. What did they do? No, what did they do? Listen, we must deal with the truth. I, I am not a politician. I am not interested in politics, but we must be honest. Just like you need to be honest in dealing with your life, who is responsible for where you are. Amen. As Christians, we have an advantage because Jesus is able to change everything in our lives. Through the word. Through the word. The nation cannot blame Buhari for everything. When you sell fake pure water, how does Buhari get involved in it? No, how? When you sell fake goods, you import fake products from China with your money. With your money. How does Buhari get involved with it? Hello? The road from airport all the way to Sango Ota. The road there. The former president lives in Otter. He was in government for four years. His farm, his university is in Sango Otter. Did he do the road? So why is Buhari the problem? 
No, why is Buhari the problem? You know what God said? My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. And he said, because you have rejected knowledge, I have also rejected you from being priest unto me. The road that leads from International Airport all the way to Sangota, where the former president lives, he was in office for eight years. He handed over to somebody he handpicked. Till today, the road has not been done. And it is being done by somebody else, not Obasanjo. It is being done by somebody else. It is not being done by PDP. It's being done by another party. And yet, you demonize the people. In the same way, we blame our parents. We blame our brothers. We blame our uncle for our failures, for our situations. Do you understand what we are talking about? In 2019, don't live your life looking for who to blame. Be responsible. At least be honest to say to yourself, I am responsible. When you don't read your book and fail your exams, who is to be blamed? No, the Holy Ghost. Somebody said the Holy Ghost didn't remind me when I went to class, so he failed me. Have you had such a thing? No, have you had such a thing? A change is initiated by the one that desires it. I just give you an instance about the nation. Can Christians rise up and say that we disagree? Church run, sorry, schools run by churches should not be so expensive. We demand a change that churches will drop the prices of school fees. Can we do it? Yes. But no, we will carry placards. We want change. Buhari must go. Ambode must go. Tinibu must go. No matter who goes, it doesn't change you. Because you too will go. But you can make up your minds to be the change agent. You can make up your mind to man. Gospelology is manifestation by application. Gospelology is manifesting the glory of God by the application of the word of God. We can demand change in the realm of the spirit. But we have to be able to demand change in the realm of the physical. If you realize that you cannot, you cannot read, the first change is for you to go to school. Amen. You can go to school. You can go to adult education. For you to say that you didn't go to school and that is why you are the way you are. Listen. Opportunity to go to school never ceases. It never stops. It never stops. Are you hearing me? And the world is evolving in such a way that without knowledge, you cannot function with technology. That's the truth. That's the truth. No matter what you do, you need knowledge, even in the things of God. You know, there was a time whereby when God calls you, even if you did not go to school, say it's okay. No, it's not okay anymore. Those times have passed. Amen? You need understanding to understand the Holy Spirit. You need to be able to read and write to be able to study the Word of God and write the Word of God. You need knowledge. And I say to you, Start from this January to begin to demand a change. Let the word of God bring a change in your life. Even in this church, you have a responsibility to demand for change. As long as you are part of the family, we must not give excuses for failure. We must not give excuses for failure. How come? How come? People take their children from Christian university to take them to government university because they can't afford. They can't afford. They can't afford church schools built with tithe and offering from the church. And you know what? We say that we are complaining about the government in the same way. You are not able to keep yourself clean and you blame everybody around for not giving you water, for not giving you soap. And you say, that's why the way you are No, sir, no, ma. It's your responsibility to determine the level of your life. It is your responsibility. And 2019 has begun. Make up your mind to be your best for God. Make up your mind. You know how it starts? 
The Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it well. Amen. Whatever you are, it doesn't matter the condition you are right now. The word of God can make a change to any form that you want. In John chapter 9, the Bible gives us a pathetic story about a man that was born blind. And so the man's situation was not caused by sin. Even though some people assume that it was by sin because the Bible said that Jesus was passing by. And for us, if we live with, like Jesus, if we function like Jesus, we can always make a change no matter the time. Remember, before John chapter 9, when Jesus saw this man that was born blind, the Bible said in John chapter 8, if you read the close, closing verses, if you read the, the end of that, the Bible said they were about to stone Jesus. They were about to stone Jesus from John chapter 8 ending. They were about to stone him. And the Bible said Jesus hid himself away. They wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him. And then he hid himself. And so you can now connect to John chapter 9. How this miracle took place. Jesus, you can almost say that Jesus was on the run for his life. And yet he was still making changes. Amen. They wanted to stone him to death. They wanted to kill him. But, but they did not kill him. And so he maximized every opportunity. In John chapter 9, we read from verse 1. The Bible said, and, uh, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Verse 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents? that he was born blind. The question is the same to you. Who is responsible that you don't have a job? Who is responsible that you are not educated? Who is responsible that you are broke? Who is responsible that you are sick? Who is responsible that you are conditioned? It's so terrible. Who? Your parents, that was what? They asked Jesus. Or the man, the question is, the man that was born blind, when would we have committed the sin to be blind? In the mother's womb? And so people look for who to blame, those to blame for things not changing in their lives. And this morning, and this morning, if you take responsibility for where you are, then you can see change within a short time. If you can say to Jesus, truly, I am responsible, you, you, you come to church, Pastor said, when you are coming, come with your Bible and notebook. And every time you come to church, you don't come with Bible, you don't come with notebook. And so, as we share the word that can change your life, you don't write anything down. And then, before you get home, you would have forgotten what the pastor said. You have forgotten. And so, when you want to pray, what is your prayer? You pray the same way you have always been praying. I met Deacon and the wife coming to church yesterday, and I saw them sharing wonderful things. I said, please, can I be part of it? They said there was one man, all that since they've known him, he has only one prayer. And that prayer is the Holy Ghost fire. What was it, Deacon, again? Holy Ghost fire possess me. That's his prayer. And every time this man is praised, Holy Ghost fire possess me. And I said to them, it would be good if he gets to know the Holy Spirit. He may not need the fire. Amen? If the person possesses you, you may not need his fire because you will be the generator of fire too. And so he prays, Holy Ghost fire, possess me. Holy Ghost fire, possess me. He doesn't need the Holy Ghost. He needs the fire. Praise the Lord. What does he want it for? Maybe he's wet. He needs to dry up. Do you understand? If you can change by reason of revelation, your prayer, your level will change also. Are you hearing me? Your level will change. And so you come to church, you don't have a notebook, you don't have a Bible, and then you listen to everything, and then you go back home, and then what your prayer again, you start praying the same prayer, Holy Ghost fire possess me. Lord help me, Lord help me, 
Lord, help me. Lord, make my brother help me. Lord, make my sister help me. Lord, make my mother help me. Lord, make my husband help me. Lord, make my wife help me. Everybody must help you. You are like the blind man in John chapter 9. Are you hearing me? You are like the blind man. You are always looking for a collector. Somebody should help you. Then, who is responsible? When you make yourself a beggar, who is responsible? When you make yourself a beggar, who is responsible? The Bible said that this blind man, he was positioned somewhere to beg. Blind, but at work. Are you hearing me? He was blind, but he was where? At work. Sometimes, sometimes we miss the understanding there. He was blind, but he was at work. You are not blind. Are you working? You think that begging is easy. Try it. No, you think begging is easy. You know what it is to stand there for 30 seconds to beg somebody and the person does not answer you. And you don't get angry. And you walk away to the next person. You beg for 30 seconds. No, if you think it's easy, try it after church. Pretend that you are a beggar. To be overlooked, to be ignored. You think it's easy. It's not easy. Sometimes the windows are so close in the car, they will hold their hand, begging. I'm sorry, go away, go away, go away. You think it's an easy walk. But if you make notes today, if you can write down today some things, when you go home, when you go home, after you have relaxed, you take your notes. What did pastor say today? So, my uncle is not responsible for my situation. My parents are not responsible for my situation. My brothers, my sisters, they are not responsible. So, what must I do? What must I do? And then you look at the scriptures again. What did the blind man do? What did the ten lepers do? The first thing you do is say, Lord, forgive me for being offended with these people for not helping me. Because an unforgiving spirit cannot receive the message of God. An unforgiving spirit. And it is for that reason, a lot of people are angry with Nigeria. They are angry with Nigeria. Praise the Lord. And they are angry with the president. And they are angry with everybody. Ask them why. Why, why are you so angry with Nigeria? What did Nigeria do to you? And so you see them, they destroy things in Nigeria because they are angry with Nigeria. Amen? Everything that is put there to make life better for them, they destroy it. They fill the gutter with their dustbin. And when there is flooding, they say, hey, government is so terrible. You fill the gutter with your junk and you are blaming the government. No, you are blaming the government. You were in a bus. You drank your water, you threw out, you drank your gut, you threw out, and those things were swept into the gutter, and then when the flood came, the gutter was blocked, it flooded into your house. Who was responsible? No, who was responsible? Buhari? Say, my eyes must open today. Do you know when we blame others, we absolve ourselves of blame? We fail to take action for a change. The more you keep blaming others, the more your situation remains because you are dealing with a lie. And until you deal with the truth, until you deal with the truth, nothing will change. You take a woman, you live with the woman, you didn't pay the bride price, you didn't marry the woman, the woman have three children for you, five children for you, and you assume that you have married her because of the children. Is that the way it works? No, is that the way it works? And then you wonder why things are working negatively around you. You stole a man's wife, a man's daughter. You stole a man's daughter. You made her your property. And on top of what you stole, now you impregnated her. One time, two times, three times, four times. And then you, one of your children is a daughter. And then you were coming back from work. One, somebody is toasting her at the side of your gate. You were so angry and red. You, I will kill you. I will kill you. You... 
my daughter, if you touch my daughter, I will kill you. Hey, have you ever heard that what you say is what you reap? No, have you heard? The one you took without paying, the enemy is waiting for your own to grow up. Hello? Or you don't know that's the way it works. And then you say, devil, devil, devil. Is, the, is it the devil to be blamed? Hello? Is it the devil to be blamed? You come to church, you had the message, go and pay the bride price of the woman you are keeping in the house. This message is for those in Munich, for those in Europe, for those in America. You don't marry by assumption. We have been living together for five years. So, so did you pay the bride price? We wanted to pay. The father and the mother did not agree. So we were waiting for the agreement. So what did you do so far? You went to work. Hello? And there you sow the seed of trouble in your home. In your home. You sow the seed of trouble. It is true that even you brought the children for dedication on the altar and the child was dedicated. Let me tell you, it doesn't change anything. You are guilty before God. And in God's family church this year, from this year, we will not dedicate a child that has come from an unlawful relationship before God. Never again, not in God's family church. Are you hearing me? It's not possible. A thief is a thief. You didn't know that you stole a daughter of somebody? Have you read your Bible? No, have you read your Bible? When Isaac married, he paid bride price. He paid. Now, two of you met somewhere because two of you are lawless and reckless and you agreed. And then you plan living together. When you want a change, you hear this message, you go back, you tell whoever, she's not even your wife, tell your roommate. That's the best. Hello? Hello? Praise the Lord. Tell your roommate. Listen. Pastor didn't spare us today. You say, what happened again in that church? You see why I told you I don't want to go to that church? Let us stay, but be coming. Amen? Because it's your destiny that's been mortgaged. You say, Pastor said that I'm a thief. Ah! You see why I don't like pastors? Please, what did you steal? He <laughs> it, it said, it said, it said, because I didn't marry you, that I stole you. Ah! Pastor says, uh, said that. Yes. You see, this pastor, he doesn't have anything to preach again. He has, lost, he has lost messages. It's you now he's preaching. Who told him anyway that you have not paid? I don't know. You know gossip in church. You are calling the Holy Ghost a gossiper. Have I met you before? Did I come to your house? As the Spirit speaks to me, so I speak to you. Are you hearing me? If you are a wise man, call the family of the woman. Call them, please. How much is now the new bride price? Because when you didn't pay, when you say it was expensive, it was 100,000. Six years later, you want to pay. It won't be cheaper anyway. Praise the Lord. And then beg them to have mercy now. Now, listen, now you are no longer coming to marry. Now you are a thief. You stole something. So now you have to be dealt with differently. Before, before you were, you were coming as an in-law. Praise the Lord. And now you are coming as an outlaw. And the way you are going to be dealt with will not be with so much mercy. And so they say half a million. Half a million. You say, uh, but Papa, it was 100,000 last time. That's why he said, my dear, things has gone up. Oh. Things has gone including the price of the How many children do you have? He said, five. He said, hey. He said, huh? He said, you see, our daughter has filled your house with good things. Amen? Amen. And now you see how your problem becomes complicated. Now, you, don't, you can't pay 100000 anymore. No. If I'm your pastor, I wouldn't even tell you to pay 100000 You start talking from three hundred, begging on your knees, forgive me. First, you have to be even be forgiven before you'll be accepted as an in-law. Praise the Lord. And these are the kind, listen, these are the kind of thing that is holding believers in ransom, not doing things the right way. 
That has nothing to do with Buhari or Bugare. Right? It has nothing to do with him. You are a Christian. You know you should have. You know you should have paid what the family demands or let the woman be. Is it by force? If they say it's one million naira, you can't afford. Let the woman be. It's their price. It's their price. For you to get angry with them, these people are too expensive. These people, I don't understand it. They're very unreasonable. Is it by force? Is she the only woman? If you say that you must marry her, then you must pay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you choose a better school, won't you pay? No, won't you pay? Hello? If you choose a better school, won't you pay? <laughs> What's your problem? When you say I must go to that school, you must pay their price. That is what it is all about. When you decide to serve God, you also must pay the price. You can't serve God without paying the price. Many of us are looking for a church that is like a social club because we are all on social media for free. And we think that church should also be like that. And that is where we become irresponsible. We become irresponsible. We had workers meeting last Saturday, yesterday, and the upper Saturday. And then we had an engineer explain something to us. An engineer, we asked him, if you are a pillar, if you are a pillar in a local building, or say in a building, and you are not carrying any load, if a pillar, listen, camera guys, show this. This is a pillar. This is a pillar here. And it's carrying load of this building. Amen? And so every worker in church is a pillar. And so if you are a pillar and you are not carrying any load, we ask the engineer, what does it mean? He says it is catastrophe. He says it means that it is useless. Amen? First, you have spent money. It costs a lot of money to build this. And so you build it. A worker costs a lot of money to train in a local church. We had a training yesterday. We had another training Saturday before that. And we're going to have another workers' training next, sun, next, Friday, sorry, next Saturday. And the last Saturday, listen, and the last Saturday of this month, we are going to have a training that will be connected with those in Munich. Amen? Praise the Lord. Do you understand? And so the training is an investment to make you productive. To make you effective. We, we are showing you. We are making you ready. To be able to do exploits for the kingdom of God. Now, if you don't show up. Whose problem is it? If you don't show up. Whose fault is it? If you are ineffective as a church worker. If you are ineffective as a church worker. Whose fault is it? You don't change physical things without changing the spiritual first. And this is what we don't understand. We try so much to change physical things. We try so hard to change physical things. But if you want to change physical things first, change the spiritual. Because the spirit controls the physical. Listen, I believe personally, and I can show it from the scriptures, the Christians in this nation are largely responsible for the way Nigeria is. Are you hearing me? Do you have a problem with that? I said to you, the Christians in Nigeria are largely to be blamed for the state of Nigeria because we have not done our homework well. We have not done our homework well. We have disappointed God. No, do you understand? Praise the Lord. Today, service started at 10.30. How many of you were here before 10.30, just in the church? Let me see your hand. Bring down your hand. If you came to church after 10.30, let me see your hand. No, let me see your hand. If you came after 10.30, you see, even though some of you even after I've asked that twice, some of you didn't even respond to any. That is even disobedience in the house of God. And you are in church, and the word is coming, and you are told, if you came after 10, raise up your hand. You didn't raise, even though you know you did. And so when you are made a senator, 
Hello? When you become a governor, what will you be? Exactly what you have done here is what you will do as a governor. That's the problem. A simple question has been asked. In the house of you are God. You are God is more than president. You are, but, 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 but. If a mobile police is here with gun and say, if you didn't come at Tamresa, you will lift your hand. Hello? If police is here with the gun, you raise your hand. That is the condition. That is the condition Christians have brought Nigeria into. No, I'm telling you the truth. You can use what happens in the local church to understand what happens in Nigeria as a nation. There are some of you, it is said that you must be in a department. If you are a member of this church, you must be in a department. That is an instruction that was given. And you know what? You don't belong to any department. You know why? Because you don't want to be part of all these things. You, you, you want to go as you want in a church. You don't want a church where you'll be told to do that, do that, do that. Some even say that they don't want to get involved with anything. They just want to do as they want. Hello? Did you, have you heard that before? Oh, I hear it plenty. Some people, they will be in a department. When they are offended, they will leave the department. When they calm down, they will go back to the department. Is that the way it's supposed to be? So they check in and check out when it suits them. And the thing that they are doing well, you can't define Christianity your own way. The man that was born blind, he was walking. He was placed on a place. The Bible said Jesus was passing by. Jesus took note of him because his condition needed help. Only what the master can change. Amen. What does verse 4 say? John chapter 9 verse 4. Verse 4. John chapter 9 verse 4. I must do what? If you read it in ASV, American Standard Version, it says, we must walk the work of him that sent me. That's what it says, we. Amen? Every Christian have an assignment. The moment you are saved, you have an assignment. Every Christian, you have an assignment from the day you are saved. And you have to finish that assignment. In ASV, he said, we must do the work of him that sent us, that sent me. We. We. Because the time comes when you cannot work anymore. And so, while you are still active and productive, we try to bring you to a point where you can do the work of him that has saved us. And you know what? You rebel. You don't want to get involved. And then as this message comes, at the end of this message, you will leave the church, you will walk away, you will not join any department. You know why? Because the word of God you have heard does not touch your spirit. And then you wonder why your situation does not change. Normally, when the word of God comes to you, it convicts you. It humbles you. You seek correction. I must do the work of him. Are you doing the work of the Lord? How? In Hebrews 12, it talks about running the race that has been set before us with patience. Running the race that has set before us with patience. Amen? Have you started the work that the Lord has given to you? I must do the work of him that sent me. Have you started doing the work of the Lord? This week, what did you do for the Lord? This week. Very soon, January will be over. January will be over. Very soon, January will be over. And then the first month of 2019 would have been gone, remaining 11. What would have been your report card for the month of January? We say go and win souls. Everybody should be active in soul winning. This is the minimum requirement for every Christian. 
This is the absolute minimum requirement for every Christian that you will win souls. You will talk to people about Jesus. And I say to you that Christians are largely to be blamed for the state of Nigeria today. Hello? Go on the road. One day, our boss was bringing something from the house to the church. And the policeman stopped it. I was at the back with another car. And I wanted to know what would happen. He said they should park the vehicle. And then the, somebody that was driving came out and was talking to him. I'm going to church. What I'm carrying is going to church. We have the church. And he was speaking a lot of grammar. Then I came out. I went to him. I said, what's the problem? He said, yeah. Um, are you with them? I said, yes. He said, uh, not naturally, but... Um, but um, they were, we were looking at their papers and the things they were carrying. As he was talking, I looked at him. I said, I'm the pastor of the church. He said, ah, pastor. Pastor, pray for us. He said, listen. Listen. On his tag, on his uniform was written Emmanuel. Are you hearing me? That is not an unbeliever's name. And I called him. I said, Emmanuel. This is going to church. God is with us. He said, oh, pastor. Uh, I said, Emmanuel. He said, pastor, take your paper. The you people should go. Sorry. Praise the Lord. How many Emmanuels? How many Joseph? Are you hearing me? How many Jacobs? How many Israel do we have in the police force, in customs, in immigration? And yet they are part of the problem. No, they are part of the problem. Is that Buhari's problem? When you go on the road next time, be checking the names of police officers that you meet on the way. You will see more, you will see more Emmanuel, more Joseph. Are you hearing me? You will see more Ebenezer's. All manner of men from the Bible, you will see it. But do they do the work of Jesus? They will still collect that money from you. And they say, uh, you know, we need to drink water. Are we responsible for giving you water on the road? Then they should dug a borehole everywhere you have a checkpoint. Amen. And what I'm saying is that you are partly responsible, just as I am partly responsible. Do we want Nigeria to change? We should stop expecting and start digging for a change. Are you hearing me? You don't expect change. You don't expect change. You produce change. You work out change. The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You, don't, you, you, you make up your mind. When you are opening your shop tomorrow, I'm not selling anything fake anymore. Are you hearing me? I'm not selling any more fake products anymore. I'm not selling any more junk anymore. That's the way it starts to change. My environment is going to be clean. You can do something that will change your environment, change your neighbor's environment, and change your neighbor's environment. Before you know it, the entire street will be changed. The Bible said that the neighbors of the man that was blind. They knew he was blind. They registered him as blind. And Jesus said, I must do the work of him that sent me. We must do the work of him that sent us. Praise the Lord. You can't come to Jesus without making a change in your life. The gospelology, listen, under the law, you were powerless to change. Under the law, you were unable to change. Under the law, you didn't have what it takes to change. But the Bible says grace came. With grace, say hallelujah. hallelujah. With grace, any change is possible. With grace, a new life is possible. It doesn't matter whether you are living in Europe, whether you are living in America. The simple truth of the matter is that the word of God is universal. It doesn't matter where you are. The fact that in America, they approve you and the woman living with that marriage does not make it right with God. The law can never supersede grace. It's not possible. The government recognizes you that you are living together because you, are, you, you have a child. 
You have a child. And they gave you paper because of the child. And you forgot where you are coming from. And that's why I said to you, if you forget your origin, you will miss your destination. Are you hearing me? The moment you forget where you are coming from, many of us, there were things our parents said we should never touch, no matter what happened. We were raised on a platform of being obedient to our parents. And then just because you flew across the ocean and you said you have arrived, where? Because you flew across the ocean, now you are a big guy. Big guy with what? You have an apartment of 50 square meters. That's what makes you a big guy. Aren't you deceiving yourself? I heard about a professor that was living in the UK. He has lived in the UK for so long. He has not come to Nigeria. And the brother invited him to come and visit him. He told the brother, you know, I don't want to come to Nigeria because I've heard about things about Nigeria. And the brother said, please, prof, come and visit. Please, come and visit. Are you hearing me? Prof, come and visit. He said, okay. I have to look for ticket. He's looking for ticket means that he looks for cheap ticket. Amen? And then eventually he, he decided to come to Nigeria, to Lagos. When he arrived, the brother sent his driver to go and pick him up with a jeep. He was picked and he was driven all the way to Lekki. And then he was showed into a room, you know, because he came late. And they gave him food quickly and he ate and he slept off. And by morning, they polished the shoe and they brought it to the uh, doorpost outside his door. And so when he woke up, he showered, he got ready. And then as he was coming out, he saw his shoe. Oh, he took it inside. Then he, his brother was waiting for him to talk to him because he wanted to go to work. So he came and told the brother, he said, ah, this hotel is very nice. Everything works. The brother said, which hotel? He said, I mean, he said, I mean this hotel is, is quite homely. The brother said, sorry, this is not a hotel. He said, what is it then, a guest house? The brother said, this is my house. He said, you don't say it. He said, no, I'm saying it's my house. He said, no, it's not possible. He said, brother, how can you, how can, how can, how, how can you? He said, is this your house? He said, this is my house. The people that attended to you are the staffs in the house. And I'm about to go to work. I just wanted to see you. He said, this is your house. So as we're talking, the brother said, when I come back, I said, okay, man. So the brother said, there is a, a jeep for you. If you want to come to office, they will bring you. Me, I'm going to work. He said, which car are you going with? He said, I have one. I have my car. My wife has her own. All of us, we have one. A professor in London for many years, he sat back. Hey, I've wasted my years. I've wasted my years. What did I do in London? He wept. Praise the Lord. He wept. He wept. All he had in London was an apartment. That was all he had. And he was so confident because of an apartment. Praise the Lord. I read about another one also that was in London. He spent so, so long there. When he was coming back, the family just told him to come back, no matter what. <clears throat> he said he didn't want to come home empty, so he brought, took a container, loaded everything in his apartment so that he can use it and set up when he comes back. Loaded them in a 20-foot container, sent back, including his car. Everything he had entered 20-foot container. Everything he had, including the car. He has been in London for over 30 years. And yet all his properties entered into a 20-foot container. Amen? And then when he arrived, he told them that ah, they must clear the contract. His car is inside. And they were working to clear. Working. They paid millions to clear. They said, our brother stays in the container. <laughs> when they delivered the container... <laughs> They, they opened it. It was Ford Cortina. You don't know what is called Ford Cortina. It's one of the old vehicles. And for that matter, right hand drive. There was in the car. And the chair that came back with the man, they won't use it in Nigeria for cooking. Are you hearing me? 
You can live in so much deception, you don't know what is happening outside you. Are you hearing me? And the brother looked at the container and said, bro, all the years in London, this is all you had. He said, you know what? I just wasted my money to clear it. He said, if you had told me, I could have bought brand new for you all these things without all the trouble. He said, we don't use these things anymore in Nigeria. He said, we don't, we don't use it. We don't use it. Amen. The worst thing that can happen to you is to stagnate without you knowing. You go into stagnation and you think because you are in the company of fools, they tell you that you are doing well. The Bible tells us another story about ten lepers. The Bible said that Jesus was going across, going to Jerusalem. On the way, they heard that Jesus was passing by. Ten of them, they shouted, Lord Jesus! Ten of them, they screamed. They got the attention of the master. They got the attention of the master. And the master stopped. Luke chapter 17. The master stopped. Ten of them came. Do you understand that? If you want a change, you need to shout for it. In Exodus chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. They needed a change. They cried. They called upon God. And God said, I have heard the cry of my people. I have heard the cry of my people. Praise the Lord. You want a change, cry out for it. You want a change, go for it. But don't accept the way things are. A man called Zacchaeus, he heard that Jesus was going to pass one way in Luke chapter 9. The Bible says he ran ahead of Jesus. He was a short man. Forget the short man, he ran. He ran ahead. When you need a change, you must have speed. Are you hearing me? When you want a change, what do you, what you have? You must have what? Speed. That you want change. You are still saying, me, I don't know whether this change or this. Great grace requires great speed. Great grace requires what? Nobody, nobody must fail in God's family church. Amen. Because the season of grace is the season of promotion. Amen. If you are in this ministry and you produce pure water, let it be the best in the whole location where you are. If you sell tomato, let it be the best tomato you can sell that anybody can get. Don't bother about the cost. When you have the best, that is when you ask God to send you a customers. Do you understand the way grace works? When you have the best quality, then you can believe God for the right type of customers. The fact that you had 200 customers in it does not mean you made profit. Are you hearing me? But you can have 10 customers and your life will not be the same again. And the person will come and say, hey, I like these tomatoes. They are so nice. You say, yes. Specially selected. I don't deal with junk. These tomatoes, he said, you don't get this type of thing anymore. He said, I want to take the whole basket. What price? You give the price. The man will take everything because grace is available there. Is that not the better, better way of doing business? Than to have 200. Give me the one of two naira. Give me the one of 150. You will get up and you will move. You are walking like a robot up and down. By the time you finish, you made 100 naira. You are everywhere spending you. You buy a panadol on top of it. Say quality. Quality. When you become like that, your product will become like that. Then when we send you to the House of Representatives or send you to House of Assembly, then you will do well. Are you hearing me? You will do well. Then when you become a governor, you will do well. If we send you the way you are now, we will be sorry for sending you. And the moment you get there, you already know you shouldn't be there. So you will steal enough to make sure you never leave. That's the problem of Nigeria. You say, I, I, I got here. Me, I'm not leaving again. Say change. change. Say change. change. I, am I am responsible. We must tell our pastors that church schools should not be so expensive. We must. We must tell our pastor that the banks owned by churches 
should consider Christians first in giving facilities. And then you hear the argument, what if they don't pay back? Okay, when you take from Wadley Bank and you don't pay back, what do they do to you? No, what do they do? Eh, the same thing they do, they will do to you. But for you now, to say that they may not pay back and you refuse to give Christians money from a Christian bank. What did Jesus do with Judas? He was a thief. He was in charge of the money. You are not asking to be in charge of the money just to be lent some money. I know about a pastor. He went to his church bank to borrow money to pay the rent of the church. They refused. They declined him. Now, I'm not. A, he went to a bank that belongs to his church. He said, please, I don't have enough to pay for the rent. Lend me. Because anyway, my entire offering goes to you. You all take, headquarters takes it. You know what? They look through his book. They say he's not qualified. The church, they disqualified their own church from borrowing from their own bank. So why should another bank give to them? Church has gone into madness in some things. And we need to change it. We shouldn't talk about the government or Buhari. We should talk about ourselves and correct ourselves first. Change begins from the house. We must change ourselves. No, are you hearing me? We must change ourselves. We have become blind to our community. We have become blind to the things around us. And we are busy building mega auditoriums. For who? Every church can change its community. Are you hearing me? Every church can change their community. We can't change our communities. There's enough church in all Lagos states to put street lights everywhere. Is it not true? Is there any street without a church? No. Is there any street without a church in Lagos now? So if every church is to put light on their street, won't Lagos be lighted up? So what's the problem? Does that require Buhari? I am getting so much tired of church lying to themselves and we lying to ourselves. I'm getting so tired of it. We blame everybody but ourselves. We blame everybody. And that's self-deception. Jesus never lived like that. Jesus never walked like that. We should take stock of ourselves. We want to change. Let me tell you, Uncle Ben, Buhari cannot change you. What's his business with you? Pastor Savory, Buhari cannot change you. Tunde, Buhari cannot change you. Why? Because it's not his job to change you. It's not his job. It will be madness to expect government to change you. For what? No, for what? We, there's about 180 million Nigerians and you want Buhari to change everybody. Is he a magician? Churches with 10,000 people, have they changed? Forget the 10,000. We that are here, have you changed? No, have you changed? Come to church on time. Come to church on time. Come to church on time. How many times have you had it? Is that Buhari? No, is that Buhari? Come to church on time. How many times have you had it? No, how many times? Have you changed? And then when you leave, when you hear a story about Buhari, say, Buhari, that man is useless. Some even believe that Buhari has died and reincarnated. Some say that he's not the real Buhari. I mean, people, people, people behave some, some, I don't know what to call it. You, they, they hate a man to a point. Even the churches or the pastors or the Christians will buy into a lie. You don't know the truth anymore. And do you know that liars will go to hell? Liars will go to hell. If you believe that Buhari is not real, are you sure? Were you there when he was transformed? No, were you there? If you forward the message that the man has died, and not, you are a Christian, do, do you know that you will go to hell for that? You don't know. You forward the statement that's not true against somebody. Don't you know you are lying? And after you say, Lord, 
I come to you in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. You are praying in tongues. Any information you forward to somebody about somebody that is not true, you are lying. You are what? You are lying. You shouldn't forward what you don't know for sure. The fact that somebody forwarded it to you, let it die on your phone. Are you hearing me? Let it die. But at eventually you become a party to deception and lie. We are not called to be politicians. We are called to be Christians. We deal with the truth because we have the spirit of truth. We live with the truth because the Holy Ghost lives in us as the truth. Don't spread rumors. Don't propagate what you don't know. Sadly, sadly enough, sadly enough, the church has gotten into politics. We shouldn't be in politics. And then, and then when the politics demands accountable for the accountability from the church, we say, what are they doing? What are they doing? When you, once a church becomes political, politics should also come into the church then and judge the church politically. We must stop the deception. We have no business with politics. Our business is the word of God. We should deal with the word of God. We should use the word of God to change our lives. We should use the word of God and do what we should do in our family, in our community. Praise the Lord. Whatever I am going to be in this life has no connection with any man, dead or alive. It's as I walk with my God, that's the way I will be. No nation can make you rich. No nation can make you poor. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Come to a place where you are what you are by the grace of God. Are you hearing me? We are meant to defy economies. We are meant to defy nations. We are what we are by the grace of God. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. It is God that showeth mercy. We are what we are by the mercies of Jehovah. And it is because you are so politically minded, you don't take advantage of opportunities that will transform you in the local church. From this day, become word-oriented. Amen? Now, Emmanuel, the little boy, was telling me yesterday that he has invited two people to church and he told them to come to church so that they can be gospelogized if they come to church. See him sitting there, small boy, pastor. He, was, he said, I've told them, come to church tomorrow so that you'll be gospelogized. And you, adults, you are still learning how to pronounce gospelogy. Gos, 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 gossip? No, not gossip. Uh, gossiping. No, 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 not gossiping. Gossip, gossip, gossip. No, not in gossip. Nothing gossip, nothing gossip. What is that word? Uh, what, what is it? Gospel, gospel. Gospel. Is it gospel? Gospel? I don't know. Whatever it's called anyway. It's gospel plus G. You have not understood gospelogies since the time it came to us. You know why? Your heart is not in it. And the little boy, five year old, is saying to somebody, come to church so that you can be gospelogized. And then Chica, they asked Chica, how are you? He said, I'm being gospelogized. Mm. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Our little children, they understand the, the revelation and the rhema and the logos of gospelogy. You, you are 40 year old. You are going about, you don't even know how to pronounce it. Gospel, 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 no, 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 gospel. Gospel. No, no, no gospel now. But I know it is something with gospel anyway. Praise the Lord. Say gospelogy. Say gospelogy. The application of the word. The application of the word to manifest. Hey. To manifest divine realities. Are you hearing me? How can you be sick with gospelogy you? No, 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 no. How can you be sick? He said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. How can a dead man be sick? How can mosquito bite a dead man? Are you hearing me? Isn't it madness you put a dead body and you begin to flit there for mosquito? Is that not madness? You've been apologized 
You died with Christ. You died with what? Christ. The life you live now, you live by faith of the Son of God. Are you hearing me? Understand the message before you become the messenger. Get the message right. Get the message right. We must launch a crusade for change by this church. If you are in business in this place, it must be the highest quality. I visited one of us before. He had a shop, a fashion shop, and I entered there. I said, why is this place like this? I said, why is this place like this? If you want to make it, you can't have your shop like this. I told myself, by the time I come here again, tile this place and put a conditioner. And within a short time, even before I get there, he has tiled the place and put a conditioner. That's gospelology at work. We must demand change when we see what is not right. Praise the Lord. Whatever you produce, whatever you make, make sure it is the best. Because the day I will visit you, you will close business that day. Hello? Ask Sister Clara. She's there. Praise the Lord. Whatever you make, raise the quality from today. If you have a school, yes, you have a school. You have a school. Did I visit that school? It must be the best quality around there. You know why? That's gospelology at work. That's gospelology at work. Never start something just to make money. Otherwise, you will fail. Those that went to make money always fail. Make a difference. Praise the Lord. In Exodus 9, Exodus 12, God said, I am the Lord that makes a difference. Praise the Lord. Make a difference. Make a difference. Demand a difference. Praise the Lord. Demand it. He is starting a dry cleaning business. Oh, I'm not going to be on him. Anything he dry cleans must smell nice, must smell wonderful. And he has started with his pastor. Yes. Whatever you do, add spices, add flavors. Make sure it is the best. Don't start anything as a Nigerian. And it is for that reason, leaders in this church, I demand the highest quality from you, standard from you. Amen? If you like, run. If you like, stay. The truth must be told that I wanted you to become better than you run away. Amen? Choir, look at me. Even those in Munich, look at me very well. I said to you, if you are in God's family church, you must be the best. And that has nothing to do with the voice. Are you hearing me? Being the best has nothing to do with what? The voice. It's about giving yourself to the Lord. And there are some of you, you can be in choir, you are looking at me like this, you are no... Or, when we finish, report yourself to this place. Pastor, please, I repent. I don't have a department. Uh, Engineer Fela should lead them. <laughs> Engineer Fela, you lead them. Those in your group without department, lead them here. Are you hearing me? You should not leave the gate today without being here. So, stand up, let them know you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen now, listen now. This is Engineer Fela. If you are not in a department, after service, as we share the grace, gospel just behind him. He will lead all of you to this place. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because he's going to lead you to Christ. We cannot, we cannot allow you with lawlessness. It is injurious. It is injurious to you and to the church. So, as engineer Fela lead them, Bola will be the assistant. All of them, lead yourselves to line up here. Praise the Lord. And if I look for you, Pupu, if I look for you, Pupu, and those of you in Munich, the same thing. You don't belong to any department. But I told you, as you finish taking offering and share the grace, the same thing. All those that do not belong to any department, they should line up. They should line up in front so that you can now 
put them in different departments. Praise the Lord. Now, there are people also that joined the to wherever they wanted to be. Listen, that is not the way God's family church will function this year. We are going to function in an orderly manner. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there is going to be a change. You heard me said now that in this church, we will not dedicate any child again that does not come from a wedlock. It's not possible. We can't do that anymore. Because later we see the problems. We see the problems come up after. Amen? And so if you want to dedicate a child, go and pay the bride price and come and dedicate after. Amen? We must demand you do things right. Oh, yes. And the better thing is that even before the girl gets pregnant, go and pay bride price. I'm saying it on air. So that those of you in Munich and in Germany and watching online, do the right thing so that God will bless you. Don't have a curse following you and trying to receive blessing at the same time. We must get it right in Jesus' name. Amen. We must get it right in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Rise on your feet. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 